Well, he is the assistant coach of uh, many hats, assistant head coach, special teams coach, defensive line coach, Tim Doust with us now. And Tim, let's start on the special teams. Let's start with the, the fake operations you've been running and how Riley Dixon sort of allows that all to happen. What went into that play last game? Well, Riley Dixon allows us uh, to be as creative as we can be. He can do so many things back there. He can run it. He can throw it. He's a good decision maker. We tell Riley, this is the, these are the looks we're looking for. If it's not there, we'll decide what we want to do from there. But he does a tremendous job of getting us in good situations. and. He puts pressure on the defense at all times, and that's what we're trying to do. So we'll, we'll continue to put an athlete back there. All right, so you had the fake field goal going. Riley's running, then he decides to hurdle a guy from LSU. What is going through the throw process then? Well, as, I, as I'm watching it develop, um, it wasn't designed for, for Riley necessarily to run. But it was the grass was there. We said, if you can get the first down, take it. Um, he got a little aggressive. I, I was scared to death because I've always say in these fakes, and I'm always a guy, yeah, that's a good one, but he's got a punt. He's got to be our punter. So I, I was really scared. When he went midair, I said, oh, boy, put my head down and, and wish for the best and then grabbed him right away afterwards. But he was very excited. He's an athlete. He doesn't like to say I'm a specialist. I'm a punter. So he did a good job. He got the first, and we'll move on, not do it again. Yeah, he's had a lot of special plays so far in his career. But what's really, I think, livened up your special teams this year is just having Brisley Esteem available for kickoff and punt returns. How, how much has that helped just – everything out that you have that weapon back there this year? Well, we felt like we've had a chance in the past. We, we thought we were getting better and better at, at protecting our kick returner and our punt returner, um, but we didn't have that special guy back there with Brisley banged up last year. Uh, the kids continue to, to buy into our scheme and our blocking, and now we're seeing that space between the, the return man and the defense uh, start to pay off for us, and Brisley can hit a seam quick, and vertical and son of a gun. One of them, I think the defense was on the field. And he ran it back a long way. So he's done a tremendous job. It's a different guy back there. Uh, we'll see if people continue to kick it to him, but we'll be prepared uh, to, to make people pay for it if they do. Combining what he's done and what Riley's doing, punting the ball, how much has that helped you guys out, just general field position advantage this year? Well, it, as you look at it, um, as I go through the, the numbers on the special teams, we always say we want to win the, the net punt, our punt team against their punt team, and our kickoffers, their kickoff return team. And so far in these games, we've been able to do that. And that's the first time we've been able to do that here. Uh, and, and since Scott's been the head coach, I'm, I'm really pleased. I think it says something about those two individuals, but there's a lot of other kids out there that, that, that the talent around here is getting better and better and better, and we're getting faster and faster and faster. There's our kickoff team has got a ton of speed. Our kickoff return team is getting back there, getting a body on a body. Same thing on the punt return team. If, you know, if Brizzly has space, he's got a chance. But if they don't do a good job, he's got to fair catch the ball. So I give those kids a lot of credit. All right, Tim, let's uh, flip to your other role, the uh, defensive uh, line coach here. And you guys always pride yourself in stopping the run. And despite having to face the best guy in the country, Leonard Fournette, you're still top 20 in the country and run defense right now. How has that group come together, a very young defense? Well, um, they've gotten better from week to week. Um, it, it's hard to say uh, that, that we've done a tremendous job stopping the run when we just gave up over 200. Um, I think as the quality of opponent gets better and better, you find out that the margin for error is smaller and smaller, and that's what uh, Fournette did to us. Um, but there's some great learning experiences for a young group of kids that, uh, that hopefully they, they, they put it uh, to use this week and in coming, coming weeks. Um, I'm pleased with the young kids at defensive tackle. I've played four kids on a regular basis, just keeping them fresh and keeping them, you know, uh, playing with their sound technique and being physical football players, defensive end. We're playing three and a half. Maybe Kadir Shepard gets better every week, so I'm getting closer to four there, uh, which was the plan as we get closer to ACC play. Uh, but they understand it now. Football is happening a little slower for them. They get it. They know what I want. Uh, they know what Coach Bulla wants. So they're getting better and better. But the true tests are really down, down to come here down the stretch. At the end, I think we all expected Ron Thompson to have a big season. So that is not a surprise. But Luke Arsenega had never played the position before. He's got four sacks already. How has that happened for him? Well, kudos uh, to Luke. He came in and, and wanted to get on the field. And there was an opportunity there at defensive end, and he takes to coaching very quickly. Uh, and he plays extremely hard. What he lacks in experience at defensive end, he makes up on his want to in his nonstop motor. Nobody on that D-line plays harder than Luke Arsenega. And, and they would all get mad, I hope, to hear me say that. But that's the truth. And he's been uh, uh, not the beneficiary of, of some good play uh, around him. It's a group effort to sack the quarterback. It's not just one guy getting it done. So, And, and Luke's done a nice job being where he's supposed to be and make his plays. And uh, lastly, Tim, uh, USF this week, uh, talking about run defense, they certainly hang their hat on running the ball, and uh, Marlon Mack leading the way 
what is the challenge with this USF rushing attack is, is that's what they do pretty much as much as they can. You know, that, that's what they do. They, they do it 220 yards a game, so a different style than LSU did, but they're committed to running the football, and our kids need to be where they're supposed to be because Mac can hit you in a hurry. I mean, he can run. You can put on the tape, he's running away from guys uh, in Tallahassee, so that, that's impressive to me and our kids. So we've got to be sound. It's a different kind of running attack than LSU, uh, you know, something with stuff we've seen before, but it'll be a new challenge and, and I'm excited to see if we're so good at stopping the run what we'll do against this team. All right Tim good luck this week. Thank you. That's Tim Douse. We'll have our eye on his D-line and special teams here this week.